Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim So today we are going to discuss a very important question that is how anyone can establish whether cancer is being caused by an oncogen or a tumor suppressor gene. So in order to decipher the attribution that whether the tumor initiated in this person or the reason of metastasis is being attributed by the influence of an oncogen which is mainly attributed as a gain of function or it is because of in uh, what you can say inactivation of tumor suppressor genes so if I write oncogens over here that means there are and then there is tumor suppressor genes for being an oncogen it means we need to alter two genes for a tumor suppressor but in order to gain a function which is a dominant form there is only one alteration single alteration is required to convert a proto oncogen into an active form right so it's basically the most easiest step for a cell is to attain the gain of function by one single event rather than to attain two independent uh, inactivation moves over here so this is one event which just reverts a proto-oncogen silent form into an active phase while over here we need two set of events one could be a uh, germline the second one we need in terms of somatic or any other genomic rearrangement or shuffling or loss which leads to inactivation of a tumor suppressor in order to learn whether the cancer is being caused the cause real causative agent for this cancer initiation is an oncogen or a tumor suppressor we first have to decipher what is hybridoma so hybridoma as the name indicates is basically a fusion now there are three different kinds of fusions number one is syncytium formation now syncytium is basically the fusion of two nuclei the nuclei over here the fusion of two nuclei together under a one roof so this one roof is a cell membrane and the fusion of two cells together is syncytium formation now this syncytium formation is further being elaborated as if one the story is extending from two nuclei to more than two nuclei and that structure would generally be called as multinucleated single cell so there are multiple nuclei let me label few over here in different colors so let's say there are green nuclei then there are blue ones and then there is something of red in color now all these are being encapsulated with one single membrane and this single cell containing multiple nuclei is called polykaryon and then there is a third term which is of our interest this is called heterokaryon well, heterokaryons are two cell fusions just like this but if the two cells which are being combined together belong to two different species for example over here one cell belongs to a human origin and the nuclei of the second cell belongs to a chicken origin and they are joined by a cell membrane so this fusion is, is also a hybridoma this one is a hybridoma this one is also a hybridoma now the fusion of one chicken cell with a human cell is also a hybridoma formation and scientists are interested to know which one is going to be present in the subsequent generation either it could be the C with small portion of H or it could be only the human DNA which is this human hybridoma formation is going to retain and get rid of the C in the subsequent passages so but this is something beyond the scope of my question which says how I could identify whether the oncogen is responsible for a tumor formation or it's the uh, tumor suppressor gene whose inactivation leads to cancer initiation so in order to decipher that phenomena let me attribute tumor with black color so these are the tumor cells and I fuse these tumor cells with normal cells I label them in blue color so this is the blue color excuse me uh, this is something went wrong over here so let's say this is the cell membrane of a 
normal cell, this is a tumor formation. Now, upon a cross, there are two possibilities which we are going to observe. Number one, there is a tumor formation. Number one is a tumor formation. So, upon the fusion, there is either a tumor formation or number B, which says the cells revert back to normancy. So, in case there is a tumor formation in the subsequent, what you can say, on the progeny of a hybridoma formation, this means that the tumor cell nuclei is going to force certain signals and dominate on normal cells progeny, on the normal cells. I'm just making them small so that you could understand that the force being governed by the tumor nuclei DNA. So, upon the fusion of normal and tumor cells, there is a subsequent tumor cells formation in the next progenies. But, if the cells revert, if the normal cells calm down the tumorous DNA and the subsequent passages contain this mode of action, this means that there is something present over here which is suppressing or subjecting this tumor to a recessive form. So, over here there is a concept of dominance. One single alteration is sufficient enough to not only pre present its mark but is also influencing the normal cells. So, this is a dominant character. Dominant feature. And over here, that single mass, that whatever the tumor positive agent may be, is actually been, uh, what you can say, suppressed by, is suppressed or governed by whatever lacking inside the tumor cell, is actually been counterbalanced by a normal cell. So, this is attributed to a recessive thing. So, there are two things wrong inside a tumor cell, which are being repaired or by a substitute normal cells proteins. So, this is called recessive. Now, this means the tumor formation noticed over here, noticed over here, is because of tumor suppressor inactivation. So, the loss of function is being replaced by a normal cell upon fusion. But over here, it's the dominant oncogene who, irrespective of its fusion with the normal cell, is still producing a protein which is responsible for hyperproliferation. Right? Are you getting my point? This is how we can learn whether the cancer caused is by an oncogen or a tumor suppressor gene. That's a pretty straightforward thing. I hope you understand. In case you have any queries, please feel free to write. Thank you.